I didn't expect to find this. A lot of signatures. So I thought that was odd. Thank you for checking out History X. My name is Ken Stano. And I wanted to make this video today because for those of you that have been watching the channel over the last couple of weeks, you've been seeing a lot of videos about the PBY Catalina. I had a great opportunity to visit the Commemorative Air Force Lake Superior Squadron where they have two PBY Catalinas on display. One, a static display, Black Cat, and the other one in their hangar that is currently under restoration. It was a great visit. I have one, possibly two more videos to post from that visit, so I hope you've been enjoying that. Before I went to visit the Lake Superior Squadron, which by the way is east of Duluth, Minnesota in Superior, Wisconsin, so it's way up north, trip that I had to drive a couple of hours for, but definitely wanted to make. I wanted to do a little bit of research. I was aware of Lieutenant Adrian Marks, who was a PBY Catalina pilot that landed his PBY in the middle of the ocean against orders, by the way, he went against orders to pick up survivors from the USS Indianapolis. And if you're not familiar with the Indianapolis, it was the cruiser, the US cruiser that carried the atomic bomb to, I think it was Tinian, where the B-29s then took off and dropped those two atomic bombs, Fat Man and Little Boy, on Japan. So the USS Indianapolis carried the bombs to Tinian. And on the way back, was torpedoed and the cruiser sank. And against orders, like I said, Lieutenant Adrian Marks landed his PBY Catalina in the ocean, pretty much destroying the plane so that it could not take off again. But it didn't matter. He saved at least 50 sailors. Now, in order to do a little bit of research, I had a copy of In Harm's Way by Doug Stanton. And if you're not familiar with the story that I just told a few moments ago about the USS Indianapolis, I strongly suggest you read this book. I will put a link to this book in the description below for this video. So you can click on it, check it out on Amazon. It's available audiobook format. I've got the hardcover here. I strongly recommend you read it. Within this book, not only does it tell the story of the survivors, the story of the Indianapolis, but it also tells the story of the heroics displayed by Lieutenant Adrian Marks when he landed his PBY Catalina to rescue many of those sailors. So the reason for this video is that I wanna tell you what I discovered when I picked this book up. Now, this is a book that I actually purchased, this particular copy, this hardbound copy, I purchased this from a charity bookstore in Ohio. So this is a used book. I was going through the stacks, saw the book. I had actually read this book before, but I always like to, if it's a book I enjoy or it's a book that I feel that I could use for future video subject matter, potential research, I always like to have the hard copy. $2.50 if I'm not mistaken. But since I had already read the book, I never picked it up. I just wanted to have it on the shelf. All of a sudden I get the invitation from the Lake Superior Squadron. Yeah, come check out our PBYs. So I finally pick up the book and I start flipping through the pages. I didn't expect to find this. A lot of signatures. So I thought that was odd. I've never seen that before in any of the books that I've purchased. Okay. So then I keep flipping. Next page, more signatures. And I just, I just didn't know what to think. Next page, title page. So the title, Doug, uh, Doug Stanton, obviously, as I mentioned, was the author. And then underneath, that certainly does look like it could be Doug Stanton's signature under there. In other words, the author's signing his book. I didn't really know what to think. What what could I have possibly had? Next page. This is what kind of st started to seal it for me. As I said, the USS Indianapolis was sunk by a Japanese torpedo. And so I flipped to this page, and then it says the signature, which appears to be Japanese characters. And then it says, granddaughter of Captain Hashimoto, 
and I think that might be um, his rank, his designation in the Japanese Navy. More and more comments written in the corners, in the margins. It kind of took my breath away once I started to realize what I was looking at. A copy of Doug Stanton's book signed by many of the USS Indianapolis survivors. Not only the survivors, but also the granddaughter of Captain Hashimoto, the Japanese submarine commander that sank the USS Indianapolis. So this book was published about 20 years ago. Whoever had this book previously, when did they take this most likely to a USS Indianapolis survivors reunion? Who knows? I could probably go through the list of signatures and determine who was alive and then who since then has passed away and process of elimination kind of figure out maybe what year this was taken to a survivors reunion and signed by all of these all of these sailors all of these survivors I'm, I'm kind of playing it down right now just because I want to make sure I get the story straight to you. But at the time, my heart was beating like crazy. And, you know, as many books as I've purchased like this from the used bookstores, I've never come across anything like this before. Oh, oh, and, he, and here's the other thing. So in the front cover is a list of all of the crew members from the USS Indianapolis. And you can see a pen has made marks next to whoever has signed the book. I've never seen anything like this before. The next question that naturally pops into people's minds and some of my friends when I told them the story, hey, what do you think something like this is worth? Well, I can't imagine whoever owned this book previously is the only person to take Doug Stanton's book to an USS Indianapolis survivors reunion. I'm sure many people did. So does it have a monetary value? Probably not. There's probably a lot of books like this out there. But <laughs> I will tell you this. This book definitely has some amazing historical value to me. And not just from the way that I found the book at a used bookshop for $2.50, but where this book has been, who has touched it, who has signed it, Possibly in a in another video, I will uh, track down each person that signed this book to determine by nature of who was alive, what year this book possibly could have been signed. That'll be for a later video. But I wanted to share this with you guys because I will, from time to time, recommend books that I've read in the past. Historical fiction books that were just incredibly well done. Audio books, nonfiction. I strongly recommend, if you have an interest in these subjects, don't just watch videos that people post on YouTube. Grab the books. Do your own research. And one of the best ways to do that kind of research is to go to your local library. Go to a used bookstore like the one where I got this book here and, and pick up a few of these. And instead of watching TV or instead of watching cats playing with toys on YouTube, learn about these particular stories. And you never know what you might find written in the margins of these pages. It just... It just brings me chills to think of what I'm going to discover next when I dig into who has signed this book. Regardless, wanted to share that with you guys. My name is Ken Stano. Thank you for checking out History X.